Greetings, everyone, and welcome back to Clan Folk, where in the last episode we managed to get ourselves a uh, humble little dwelling. We've even got a, a completely enclosed outhouse, which I think is uh, good progress for the first episode. Now, in this one, there are a bunch of things that I want to address, uh, problems that I noticed in editing of the last episode, and, of course, uh, making some more progress then on our project for today, which is going to be setting up a barn. Now, the first thing I noticed is I uh, I left uh, Kyra with time off rather than putting them back on the work schedule. That was my bad. Sorry about that, everyone. It is now fixed. Uh, we'll just uh, clear a couple of these out of there. Now, the next one is that I am a little bit concerned about having um, Kyra prioritizing hauling. See, hauling is one of these jobs where there's never going to be a time when there isn't something to haul. Or generally speaking, because almost every other job is going to make a hauling job. So I would rather Kyra have that as a bit of a lower priority. At least below some of the other, well, what I would consider uh, critical tasks. Of those, cooking and hunting are there in my opinion. I would like cooking done quickly because it's generally, until much later, not a job that you do all day. It's something you do probably just early in the morning or after the first cycle of your your um, eel traps activating. Hunting is the next one, so this will cover butchery, it'll cover setting the eel traps, um, setting snares and the likes, and then harvesting, so going out and cutting down grasses. Uh, as for Bentham, uh, you've got repair, I'm happy with that. Building is a solid one, but we don't strictly need it because Amira is on that, so I'm going to move that down a little bit. Amira's also got the gathering as well, so I'm fairly content with this one. Instead then, I think Amira's going to have have uh, lumberjacking around here and uh, since we don't have someone working on cleaning uh, Bentham that's gonna be your job I'm gonna put it underneath building though because cleaning again much like hauling it's a job that never really ends so I do want you to try and uh, get that one sorted sooner rather than later now as you can see our uh, pr preferred jobs are slowly sliding down the list which isn't exactly great but uh, it is what it is uh, we'll move up hauling a little bit i think those priorities are going to be a little bit better for us now one last thing oh unfortunately it's probably just stopped but i might have caught it in time let's have a look you're in a huge room so you're really happy with that but Unfortunately, disturbed sleep, darkness, fear. Okay, well, darkness, fear is also uh, a useful one. Uh, basically, the fire there, which has just got out, is casting light over the over the uh, the sleeping spots. Now, generally spe speaking, people don't enjoy trying to sleep whilst staring at the fire. They love the sound of crackly fire, maybe the, the, the soft reddish glow in the rest of the room, but staring straight at the fire is a bit of a problem. You notice this uh, nice crisp shadowy line there? That actually is functional, not just aesthetic. That is telling us where their head can be, where they won't get a there's light in my eyes debuff sort of thing. Now, people who are afraid of the dark, obviously, it's a little bit different. They would prefer to be somewhere where it's, uh, where it's lit. Uh, that's not a problem that we're going to be able to resolve for a little while. And that just uh, makes me aware that I don't believe anyone is prioritizing mining at all. Uh, right, let's do... Well, we've got harvesting lumberjack. Let's go ahead and bump this up then above cleaning. If we can get this space dug out, then hopefully we can get a little bit more work down there. Uh, as we are going to require... Uh, moving the beds down into this spawn. I think that will help out a great deal. Okay, some good progress has been made on the path over here by Amira. Thank you very much for that. But I'm noticing that we are starting to accumulate a lot of idea points. And in addition to that, we've got a bunny just sat there right now. I think we very much want to make use of... Uh, Persephone's hard work. We're also going to move the corpse pile a little bit closer. The dump, it makes sense to have far away, but the corpse pile, once we build the next thing I'm going to be working on, should be closer. Ha ha ha! I see you there, you scallywag rats. Now, rats are a tricky one. They will scatter the moment any any uh, predator gets even close. Cats are a bit of a different deal because they're stealthy. But we there are ways that we can deal with rats, and in fact, having rats in here isn't that 
bad of a uh, of a thing as it does afford us access to meat even at times when we otherwise wouldn't but if they get anywhere near food they will cause it to spoil even food that normally wouldn't they'll also generally have a have a quick munch on it as well so let's go into ideas and see about resolving that so first and foremost we want the rat trap secondly i would like to get the sleeping mat thirdly i would like the butcher's block and we've still got a couple of points sure we'll put two down and grab the mushroom rack as well okay well with all of that we're not going to be able to get to it all super quick but we can definitely make a start so i would like a butcher block about there uh further to that i would like a uh do we have a mushroom rack right about there this will allow us to uh dry the mushrooms that we've got into much much more long-term storage uh have we actually got any meat yet no not yet so we'll get on to that as soon as we're able how's the uh the lumbering going it's going all right bentham and his sister working on the path right now amir is going to have to just piggyback over bentham there because it does take a fair old while to get rid of the stumps now if you're trying to build something over a over a tree they'll chop the tree down and then they'll uh, chop the stump up as well otherwise they will just leave the tree there something that i mentioned in the last episode is generally a good thing now we do need to try and get rid of these rats if we're able so i'm thinking since they seem to be very uh very happy to make their home over here let's set up a couple of traps here and there let's uh, also shrink that stockpile a bit now hopefully this will catch these rats but it won't uh, solve the problem of having rats at all for that we're probably going to need rat traps on the outside but for the, the time being i'm just going to set this up just to try and have that be uh, be done uh, sooner rather than later uh, now that we've butchered our first animal though we have unlocked the hide rack and i would like to get one of those up and running if i could there we are that'll do and i'll replace uh, a bed down the bottom now we've got sleeping mats so i wouldn't mind trying to build one of those if we can now it is going to require straw do we have anything i can break down into straw it looks like you are working on some flax stems that's fantastic we will immediately process that into straw there we go so a bit of extra straw there as well now a good amount of it we're going to use on twine now i'm not going to set up a snare kit yet but that is something that we're going to want to get up and running uh, reasonably soon uh, how's the path going the path is almost done actually well done indeed uh what were you grabbing down there i think you were going and getting some straw possibly ah there we are you were cutting up the reeds okay that makes a lot of sense we might want to go and uh cut back some of the reeds from down here but honestly i'm fine with giving them more things to do over here uh, in terms of the dried mushrooms, this is something that we're always going to want a lot of. So I'm going to pop this way up at 200. More than we're going to be gathering, but uh, it should help out. Uh, additionally, I would like to start gathering some clay. Now, it's going to take us a while to get the amount that we're going to need to be able to unlock clay storage. Uh, the clay bin is going to require a thousand clay to be gathered. That is quite far away, uh, but you know we'll, we'll start working on it at the very least. Uh, I'm going to allow the idea points to accrue for a little while here, though. All right, well done, Bentham. We have we got everything we need in terms of uh, twine. Yes, yes, we do. Okay, well, uh, hopefully, we can get to work on some of the other items. There we are. We are getting. Okay, we're going to be back to the point of making more twine, but we are going to have a hide rack, which is going to allow us to turn the fresh hide we've got here into a dry hide now while it's out and about we've got to keep it dry uh but while it's just sat there it is basically rotting it's just fresh hide but once it's dried hide then that's gonna be much better and one of the rats two of the rats already taken out marvelous work rat traps hopefully once these are reset then uh ooh, and you have uh, skedaddled now you went straight out here i could set up a couple of these rat traps uh, flanking the doors and that would help it doesn't give you a lot of meat from rats but uh, or, or any hide to speak of but it is a a pretty uh reliable source of meat uh from what i've seen so uh, even in winter having a couple of rat traps can actually keep you going it's probably not the the nicest situation for the the clan folk to have to be eating rats but at the same time meat is meat uh, once once it's cooked uh, 
I'm, I'm not sure that, I mean, it might, it would probably have a very distinct flavor, but I'm not sure it would have a bad flavor. Uh, especially uh, the rats that are probably feeding around, like a city rat might, might taste very different from a country rat, uh, if, you, if uh, you see what I mean. But uh, I imagine these rats are a fine, fine feed. Not very much feed, but uh, probably good enough. Okay, I think we've uh, managed to deal with the lion's share of the rats that were in the house. So I'm going to start moving these rat traps outside. That being said, I'm sure there's going to be a bunch of them that will show up now I've said something like that. But we've got some rat traps flanking the doors on each side, or at least once we've moved these out and built another one. I'm going to keep two of them in here because these were the things that the rats were tending to try and hide underneath. We've got a rat heading straight inside right now and straight under under the mushroom drying rack, which is a little bit frustrating, but uh, hopefully we'll be able to deal with that reasonably soon. Ah, there we go, Bo is ready, which means we could now, if we really wanted to, go and deal with the deer. And if we did send uh, Bentham out, then uh, Arrestes would go with Bentham. And actually, I do believe that uh, the deer hounds will go with anyone who's going out to hunt. They won't only follow their particular human, but any any uh, huntsman uh, heading out to deal with uh, the deer, the deer hound would go with them. And here we go. The too bright debuff is nixing Kyra's ability to sleep because they are in full view of the fire. And I imagine everyone has got that. No, actually, you don't because you're afraid of the dark. You'll never have it. And it looks like you're far enough away from the light source for that not to be a big uh, a big problem for you. But still, oh, there we go. You've now got uh, darkness fear kicking in. It's pretty much the opposite for Amira as it is for Kyra right now. So we're probably going to need to make sure that Amira's private room, once we get to the point that we can make a private room for them, has a torch on the wall that they can always keep lit all the way through the night. I'm fairly certain that if they set the torch up just before they go to bed, it will last the, the lion's share of the night. If it doesn't manage to last all the way through, it'll last long enough for it to uh, take care of everything. And finally, we've got a good bed. Right, okay, with that, we're going to move some things around. First and foremost, got to pop that over there. Once that's moved, we're going to set up a couple more of these beds to be built. And that is going to be a big big help for us but you will have noticed we've already got animal beds and for the time being i guess we could just get the the sheep indoors but i think we'll wait for that one right let's get two more uh beds set up sleep mats rather so one there one there there we go and that will be absolutely marvelous now it's going to take them a little bit of time to get it but i'm fairly confident that they're going to be able to take care of that uh today uh, if we have a look down here, we have got hunt wild animals. That is not a big priority for me. Now, the next thing we're going to want is probably a branch barn door and a vent. A critter door would be imperative if we had chickens because chickens can't use a barn door. They have to have a critter door. Basically, they, they have to have something that they don't need to open. Uh, we can get a dog bed. We can get a floor mat at this point. And in fact, let's go ahead and get a floor mat. And uh, this is going to be uh, RimWorld logic for anyone who is familiar. We're going to place that down here. And I'm going to place uh, a wall. Well, actually, I guess I, I should have moved that uh, in a different way. But we're going to have those around there. And we're going to have a little wall entering into the abode. There we are. Now, I wonder if I can also place a floor mat here or not. I might not be able to. No, it seems that I can't. Okay, well, that's a shame, but oh well. I'll just pop that there then, and this one back down here. We're going to have the floor mat just outside. I'm definitely going to have a roof over the top of it, though. There we go. And the floor mat should then allow us to just keep uh, dirt off. Used to keep floors clean, not needed for gravel or dirt floors. Well, we will be having better floors soon, sometime soon, I hope. There we go. So that will uh, look nice. And we can do exactly the same thing over here. Have this just up top. This one just up top. In fact, we could just connect the wall there if we really wanted to. Uh, but we'll get another floor mat just in this spot here. Oh, there we go. And then extend the wall out just a little bit further. We will want a roof over the top. And that will give us a little bit of a better situation over there. There we are. Now we're going to need plenty of straw. Always need more straw, it seems. 
Now then, we've got the vent and we've got the branch barn door. Now, this wall is going to be part of that. Actually, we shouldn't have that there, I suppose. So, uh, the, this rat trap that we've got here, this can move elsewhere. And we're going to build out a little area for a barn. Now, we may as well have the door right there, I suppose. And in fact, we could just branch that right across, making this a very useful little, little spot for catching the rats as they're trying to get in. In fact, if we wanted to, we could entirely enclose this area and have this rat trap over here instead uh, at the entry point uh, to this zone. Uh, I don't think we need to keep this part heated, so that should be fine. But sure, if we move that across and, and take this wall down, uh, I do feel bad about building it now, but let's uh, get rid of that as soon as I can. Ah, okay, we need to go in here and demolish walls. There we go. Right, that will do. We're going to want a barn door right there, and then we're going to want to get, once again, hay roofs. Unfortunately, this is not going to be a good time for our hay reserves, but oh well, there we are. Now, you may notice that I'm not drawing it over the stone. It's because the stone is actually already there. In fact, we don't even need it here. We'll take that one away. Uh, there we go. So we don't need to put any roofs there because it already has a natural rock roof. So uh, you can click this to turn the roofs on or off, or you can have it on auto, and then if you zoom out enough, it'll automatically make itself visible. But that should be a good little barn area, and it would allow us to have a vent right here as well. The animals will be able to sleep in the barn. We've got plenty of room for them. It's not going to be the best the barn in the world to start with, but uh, it should be good enough. Uh, we can have the hide rack outside, or in fact, we could even have the uh, butcher block outside if we really wanted to. And there's a uh, part of me that does, in fact, want that, because it would keep it out of the... Uh, uh, stop making blood in inside, which I think uh, would be nice for those inhabiting. So we'll just set that up there. We'll also pop down a, a little dirt path here for as much of uh, the tile as we're able to. Okay, that's actually starting to look pretty nice. We'll still have the, the doormat then on the outside of this room proper. I think that'll actually work really, really well. At this point, I could put down another rat trap, which we did have over here. So I can go ahead and place that there if I really want to. And I might as well for the time being. Okay, looking pretty good. Now let's have a look at the other stuff that we've got. We have now got the straw pile. We have gathered enough straw. If we have a look through here, uh, we can also now sow grass if we particularly wanted to, which would uh, be something that would be useful. So we require three logs and 10 seconds to build the straw pile. But this, much like all of the, the specific storages, is going to be significantly more efficient than the space taken up on a single tile. Like a single tile can only have a single stack if it's like a, a regular storage tile. Whereas this is going to allow us to have a lot more than that. So let's go ahead and set these up. I'm going to want straw piles. Uh, we don't really want our straw to get wet. So we could put uh, something out there, for example, and then pop a little roof over the top. And that should take care of everything there. We'll probably expand this out. In fact, might even put a wall down here and just have this as an outdoors storage area. Now, this isn't only for straw. Uh, the flax stems will also go in there. Uh, it won't take hay, though. This is processed um, grasses. So straw, flax stems, um, I think that's pretty much the only two things that will go in there. Uh, we would see it if there was more, but it, it can add more as you go along. So if we just haven't encountered something yet, it won't show much like Oxygen Not Included used to do, though it has since gotten better with. I will uh, give it credit with its due. All right, okay, so we've got a snare kit. How about we go and set this down at this point? Let's go and pop this snare. Uh, we can see where the uh, rabbits have been most active down here. Oh, it looks like our cat is very active down here as well. So maybe we don't go to that warren then. That warren's already getting getting uh, troubled enough as it is. Instead, we're going to go over here and we're going to place a snare just about there. Now, late, at some point, I'm going to draw a path out there, but that is not going to be something that I work on right now because that would take me a long time and I would really rather not. Uh, instead, I am going to finish that off, though. I am noticing the inefficiencies of my paths a lot more as we look at them, but uh, for now, this is still a lot better than it would have, would have been otherwise. Right, if we can get a dog bed down, though, I would be very, very happy with that. Let's see if this gets uh, stowed, and if it does, pop, and then break that down into just the straw. You notice that because it was proximate, the straw went straight into the storage space. 
without anyone else having to work on that. That's actually true of all um, all construction, uh, all crafting zones. So for example, the drying mushrooms here, the dried mushrooms will automatically get put into the serving basket, which is a very, very nice uh, little, uh, little quality of life offering, I must say. Uh, right, well, at this point, I'm going to say we want to start looking to get some more mushrooms. Uh, but I'm also aware that it is the 7th of summer, and it will very soon be autumn. So I'm going to start chopping down some trees. Now, this is going to be a fairly labor-intensive project, if I'm honest. Uh, but it's something that I would like to get done now. And we're not going to take most of the uh, the stumps away. I'm going to allow those to persist. But we are going to start looking at gathering... Hmm. Well, there's all these gra grasses over here. I don't think we need to, to rush towards those. Really, it's mostly getting the straw at the moment. And flax is probably the better option for that right now. So let's continue cutting the, the flax over here. We can, of course, go and just cut the, uh, the reeds from uh, another pond. And that might not be a bad idea, but it's such a long walk for us that it would be better for us to go to the reeds up here instead, since we've already got a path going over there. And we can get rid of some of the, uh, the thistle as well, or rather harvest the thistle. Right, okay, so going to need a little bit of time. Oh, look, on the dog bed already. Fantastic. Hopefully we can get to a cat bed reasonably soon, but the cat bed requires us to have unlocked the clo clothing basket, I believe. Uh, which is probably an automatic unlock once you've got the clothes zone. Let's have a quick peek through here. This, uh, yes, uh, this would require us to make some clothing, but that would then unlock the uh, clothing basket. And then onwards from that, you get the cat bed, <laughs> which I think is in its own way incredibly charming, honestly. But uh, we've got almost everything we need for signs. Okay, then maybe getting the charcoal kiln up and running a little bit sooner than I was expecting will be the correct way to go. We absolutely need to get trading, or at the very least, getting some jobs in here to help out. So, uh, time for to let the clansfolk take care of their needs, have another sleep, and I will see you on the morrow. Okay, here we go. We have managed to get enough... Uh, oh, there we go. We've managed to bring all that up. We've managed to get enough ideas now to start the charcoal kiln project. Now, it uses branches to create charcoal, which we will then be able to use to unlock the various job boards, trading signs, and vacancy signs. We will get to why that's so important very, very soon, I should imagine. But for the time being, let's just get the charcoal kiln up and running. Now, you'll notice that this does not kick up any sparks, even though it still provides heat. It does provide a bit of uh, light, nor is it flammable. So, a good place to pop it is right about here, since no, uh, I don't want anything being placed there anyway. And I'm turning the, the light away, because the uh, charcoal will be, uh, the, the glow from the charcoal kiln will be in this direction. Uh, it's not a charcoal pile, it is a charcoal kiln. Uh, the distinction is not entirely clear to me. Um, I thought charcoal was generally produced in, in a large mound, rather than having any kind of aperture, but uh, it seems that this is a little bit of a different design. Uh, but once that's built, then again, nothing is going to be able to fall on this tile. But since this is the only available place for sparks to go anyway, then it's just a neat way of using that space rather than just having to have a tile blocker there. So wood ash will be created from this using tanning leather and fertilizer that's not something we're going to need to worry about for a very long time so we're not going to even consider that one uh, we do need to get more materials made we've got twine being made all the time which is great we do need to get hay starting to be produced unfortunately we've got We've got decent... Oh, uh, we've got a flax sheaf down here. I thought we had hay as well, but uh, apparently not. So uh, it doesn't look like that one's been brought in. But we do have a decent amount of straw being gathered now over on the shoreline there, which is fantastic. We've almost got everything built in here that we need. So at this point, I think it's fair for us to go ahead and place down the animal beds that we're going to want. All four of them. Once these walls and this door is made, and the, that last piece of roof there as well, then I can then consider placing in the vent. But until then, we don't actually want any kind of heat venting out here because we would just be losing the heat to the environment. And here we go, the first night that our sheep have spent in... Well, I mean, it's not a finished barn, but at least they had 
a bed to sleep in. They are very ready to be sheared, by the way, but we just don't have the tools. Now, when I've got these selected, you'll notice that some of the doors don't show that they're allowed through them. Uh, we are going to allow the sheep out through this door. This is uh, a barn door, so it automatically has the animal um, prior, uh, well, I guess, uh, permission set, but you can go through all the various permissions. So this one is uh, for uh, everyone but animals. So you can make a barn door that animals can't use, but rats can always get through, no matter the door type. But any door can be set to allow animals if you want to. The, then you've got unlocked, but it, it's fine functionally uh, locked to animals. Then you've got guests are allowed. So for example, traders wouldn't be able to walk through it. Um, then you've got workers, so guests wouldn't be able to go through it. And then finally you've got family. But there are actually three stages of family if you want to uh, be particularly uh, micromanagey over where people are allowed to go within your uh, within your area. I've never really found a need to have that level of micromanagement, but I'm sure there are cases where it would be necessary. And certainly there's probably... Uh, additional content on the way that would give that kind of uh, level of micromanagement a purpose. Uh, what are you up to at the moment? Are you... Let's have a look. You're trying to socialize with your cat. I see. Uh, okay, now, now now with your your sister. No, no, mostly the cat. The cat does not want to talk to you. It's like, yes, you're my human, but go away. I frankly had enough. I'm feeling a little bit overwhelmed. My lord. Don't you know how to deal with cats? Ah, there we go. Charcoal Kiln is up and running. Marvellous. Okay, now you can either go for the ash itself, but you need bark for that. We don't actually have bark available, but we most certainly want to use branches and clay, and they will actually, the clay will be used up to make charcoal and ash. Now, I would always like to have about 50 charcoal available at all times, so uh, you crack on with that, Milado, and that will be absolutely fantastic. Once we have the charcoal, then we will have access to the various signage that we're going to need to let people know that they can come and stay in our settlement or that we're, we have ways for trade. And that is going to be a very, very important thing for us to get available. Uh, we've just unlocked the log pile, which is a rather nice one. If we have a look over there, a home for logs and for spiders. Duly noted. Uh, it requires four logs to build, but I see no reason not to go ahead and build that right away. We can have it along this little area. We can have a little overhang across this whole area if we particularly want. Ah, there we go. Now, one of the things we're going to want, and something that I completely forgot, is we're also going to want a window just so that there is actually uh, some light in this room. You'll notice that rooms uh, are set without the diagonals. The diagonals are entirely up to you. You can put them there if you want it. I happen to like it, but occasionally I like to give a bit more of an organic look to a room, but uh, you don't actually need the corner tiles So if you're running low on resources, you can get by without them if you specifically want to Now with that done we can at last install a vent. Now, if we have a look in there, it's currently 26 degrees outside and it's uh, 24 inside. Uh, we will go ahead and set that up because the heat coming off the uh, charcoal kiln and the, the cook fire will definitely be very, very helpful for us in the future. At this stage, I'm going to move our branch pile outside and I'm going to move the thresher up just so there's a little bit more room in here, if I'm perfectly honest. It's, it's not the best space as it is. Uh, let's bump that up a little bit. Uh, well, I'll just let you take it down first and then we can move it up. Uh, this can be taken down and stored somewhere for the time being. But we are de most definitely going to want the thresher set up properly. So let's uh, go ahead and pop that one over here if we can. As soon as the uh, rat trap gets moved. Which will hopefully be fairly soon. There we go, marvellous. There we are. Uh, right, that is going to give us everything we're going to need for now. They can easily move over these tiles, but I'm not sure if they could move through those tiles. Oh, we've unlocked the clay bin. Thank heavens, because that takes up an enormous amount of room in our inventory as is. So we'll pop the clay bin right there. That will get a lot of stuff out of uh, that storage space. Actually, you know what? No, let's not put the clay bin there. Let's move the clay bin a little bit further up, I think. Uh, we'll pop that one over here but we are definitely going to want some roofing here as well just to keep things nice and dry so let's go ahead and pop a little bit of an overhang there that should do nicely i want to reserve this for a little hay uh hay bale or something along those lines now it's going to take us a fair old bit of charcoal to be able to get these going uh, but that is something that we do want to try and get up and running relatively quickly 
if we're able to. Additionally, we are going to want to start thinking about food storage. Uh, and on that note, I'm going to need to think about gathering some more berries as well. So let's uh, get out there, get a couple more berries on the go. That should be enough. And while we're at it, let's have a look for some more mushrooms that might be out and about. Looks like we may have already gathered most of the mushrooms from around these areas, sadly. Uh, but that's okay. We'll, we'll see a couple here and there. Once they are brought in, then they'll immediately start to be uh, dried, which would be perfect for us. Right, there we go. That should all help out once we've got all of this built up. There we are. Uh, we've already got the log set up. Now, this is going to be able to hold an enormous amount of logs compared to uh, the the amount of space that logs typically take up. I think they take up 100 on a single tile, but again, this will be able to hold 600, if that is the case, on a single, uh, well, on two tiles. So it's uh, increasing the efficiency by three. Right, there we are. Got another bunch of charcoal on the go. This will be making a decent amount of ash. We're not going to be using the ash just yet, but uh, we will be getting there. Now, we could get a jobber at the moment, and that is a useful, uh, you know, an extra set of hands, but we do have to pay them a wage. So I'd rather get the trading post first and start making money before I go straight to getting a jobber in here. That being said, there is one exception to this that we can go for, and that is to allow a uh, visitor to stay the night, if we particularly want to. You notice how there are already mushrooms spawning around the uh, the stumps uh, here and there? That's actually going to do a really, really good, uh, great job for us. I could build a, a dedicated uh, space over here, perhaps, for some guests, but right now, maybe the best thing is to have them in the same space as everyone else, if I'm perfectly honest with you. Uh, let's go ahead and pop that over there, and once we've got a bed set up, I may go ahead and unlock the uh, the ability to have, have guests come over. Uh, we're starting to see rain damaging a few items, so maybe it's already time for us to place down some more roofs over here. We'll see about that, but uh, hopefully we can condense some of this as well. There we go, and let's get another bed down if we can. There we go. Once all of that is set up, then we'll be able to get uh, get some visitors to, to pop in and uh, pay us a little bit of money, uh, depending on how well their stay goes. Unfortunately, we have lost a good bit of cook deal. That is quite the shame. Now, right at the moment, we don't have any real way of forcing our colonists to eat a certain thing but later on we will be able to build a, a serving table which will greatly increase how attractive any meals on the serving table are so that is one way of ensuring that you're not wasting food like we have there sadly uh, also that meat outside really does need to be brought back in <laughs> Uh, hopefully someone will do that. In fact, I'm going to pump that up to uh, priority 9 so that uh, if someone will do some hauling, uh, is anyone going to do it? No. Everyone is chilling out for now. Uh, well, in that case, I'm afraid you're not. Please go and uh, first, can I tell you to move over there? There we are. And then you can pick a new task. Where are you going? Uh, you're going to go wash your hands. Fair enough. Before you handle meat, I suppose that is a reasonable thing to do. Uh, a lot of stuff just decayed in there all at once. That is very unfortunate. But it is coming along to autumn now. We've got one more day of summer, and then we are going to be in autumn proper. And uh, that is when the temperature is going to start to drive downwards. But as you can see, the temperature inside between these two rooms is a solid 25 degrees, despite it being 13 degrees outside, which is uh, not bad at all, all things said and done. Now, we need a little bit more of a roof, and then, uh, sadly, of course, all, uh, all of the uh, things that were getting wet were on the furthest side, so I, perhaps I should have just expanded the roof out in that direction uh, to uh, make it a little bit faster to cover them, but it should be fine as is. Alright, getting a little bit more washing done. Thank you very much indeed. I would like to get a better storage solution for our food, and I am strongly considering creating a bit of a larder over here digging into the mountain over here as i've mentioned that does keep things cooler for longer and eventually we will probably repurpose this whole area but for now that might actually not be a bad idea uh, also i am so terribly sorry <laughs> i just left you trying to get things done all night my bad uh there we are 
Uh, let's go ahead and dig into the mountain. We'll probably make a little room about yay big. Now, the thing with uh, the rooms in, in this is you can put ice, uh, which is typically how rooms were kept cold in ye olde times. Uh, you just, well, usually it would be a case you'd go down to the river and just carve blocks of ice and then put it into a cellar. And once you got a sufficient mass of ice there, it kind of had a, uh, it, it reached a critical mass where it was capable of chilling the environment enough that it could chill itself. Um, you could introduce more water and it would freeze. Uh, but, you know, it would be enough to, to sustain the temperature uh, all the way to the next winter, assuming it wasn't a particularly arduous summer. Uh, the, this game is very much the same. A full pallet of water jugs. Now, we are going to have to get to the point of, of, of pottery in order to make this happen. But a full pallet of water jugs uh, can freeze. Uh, it's basically six jugs, and each jug is capable of freezing one tile. And uh, when you've got a pallet, it can hold six jugs. So you can end up with two full pallets will freeze a four by three, and then a third would add an extra bit of freezing over over what we would need so we would have a good couple of tiles in there where we'd be able to store our produce now if i really wanted to do it a uh, clever way and i do we will actually make it more like this and let's just have a think yeah something like that would work a little bit better for me and we'll have a two tile entryway and the reason for that is we can have a door and then a rat trap. So any rats trying to get in initially will uh, face the rat trap and uh, get taken down. Then we can still have the freezing, uh, the, the freezers up the top. Now there are all sorts of ways that you can set up uh, a, a freezer in this game. And this is certainly not the best one. Uh, you can have freezers where there's a, a separate compartment. I can give you a bit of an example of that. For example, you could have something like this uh, where all everything in here would be just pallets of uh, water jugs that are frozen and then a little vent there so the chill would leach into this room. That's not something that we're going to worry about though. though. We're going to leave it like this for now. <laughs> uh, the symmetry irritates me enough and I am sorely tempted. In fact, tempted enough. <laughs> we're going to do that. <laughs> uh, I hate myself sometimes. <laughs> we're going to have the water jugs over there and then we'll just have these set up for, for everything else. But that does allow me to set up the rat trap and we can pop the rat trap right there. And further to that, we can go ahead and then and place a straw door right across here. Ooh, actually thinking about that, this is going to be a very dark room if I do it this way. So what we might want to do... Ooh, as much as it pings me, it may actually make more sense to uh, have this be a large room because I'll be able to put a window in that wall. Uh, and the stone, uh, the, the kind of the mountain uh, roof is capable of a two span. So this, the no, no ceiling is further than two tiles away from any of the walls. So this should all be fine. All right, hopefully someone will move the uh, rotting food out reasonably soon. Uh, you know what, maybe I will put that up a little bit higher and we'll see how that goes. Now, how is everyone doing at present? Um, Amira, maybe I should move up your priority for hauling things as well. Uh, yeah, do that before lumbering. We'll see if that can help out. Now, how much food have we currently got? We've got more than enough berries and, in fact, more than enough meat for everything that we're going to need. Hopefully, we can get that meat cooked because that meat is about to go off. Uh, I think we might get to it as long as Kyra immediately tries to cook it. Yes, you did. Okay, that's actually fantastic. Well done. Okay, now, no sooner have we been talking about needing jugs than we have the idea points and the access to the kill available to us so it's time for us to get that going now i really did want to go for the vacancy sign but honestly getting the kiln up and running is a bigger concern for us as that is going to unlock clay jugs it's going to unlock clay bricks it will unlock tile as well as a few other things besides as we develop it now let's go ahead and access that the kiln outputs eight degrees of heat to 48 tiles it has no flammability and we can actually uh, set that up indoors as well, which will be particularly nice. At this stage, I'm starting to think that we might need to go ahead and relocate our food in here. 
for the time being. There is no point in uh, worrying too much about setting up a cold storage in here because we just don't have the means to do that yet. But if we can get just, just get the actual food in there, then that will be ideal. Uh, we're also going to want a window in there because as soon as this door is done, which it very nearly is, then we are going to have a completely dark room which will frighten certain people. There we go. Let's get everything on the go for us. And the mushroom rack is back up. I don't know if the mushroom... Yeah, no, the mushroom's got taken off the mushroom rack. My bad. Uh, but there we are. Uh, why is why is Amira unhappy? What's, what's wrong there? I have no idea. I think Amira doesn't like the dark. Nice. Uh, but this does mean that we can move a couple of things around. We honestly don't need the rat traps indoors anymore. So uh, go ahead and just take these down. We will eventually need them. So I don't mind keeping them there, but uh, there we are. That's all perfect. Now, the next thing we're going to want then is the kiln. And once again, since this doesn't actually produce any kind of uh, sparks, we can just build it wherever we want. So uh, I'm fine with uh, placing that down about... Well, actually, I'd kind of like it over there if I could honestly get it there. Uh, let's go ahead and move some of these things around. So we'll have the thresher over, let's say, here. We will have this workstation right about there. I'm going to have to move you around, though. Unfortunately, there's so many things I need to move. Right, let's get everything taken down. It's going to be a quick shift. There we go. Dog bed can be replaced. We can have the dog bed over in this corner. We will have the cat bed over there as well. Let's just get the important things where they need to be. Soon we will have a proper cat bed, I promise. Uh, the work zone can then go in here, and we may as well... Ah, I'll, I'll have it in that direction, just so the anvil is uh, facing the right way. And then finally, we'll pop the kiln right over here. We'll just place that in there. There we are. Now, given that, I'm going to want the clay bin over here, I'm going to say. Uh, simply, well, actually, even thinking about that, let's, uh, let's move this around a little bit further. Let's be smart about this, shall we? If we have the kiln right there, I could have the clay bin right next to it, and that means it'll automatically be able to pull from the, uh, the uh, clay stockpile and straight in there. That would be ideal. Now in here it's 18 degrees, outside it's 19 degrees, so this is already cooler than the outside. This In here it's over 22, but it's going to continue to drop in here because this is all under the mountain, and that is absolutely perfect for what we want. Uh, we no longer need this stockpile, so we'll get rid of that one in its entirety. Uh, furthermore, uh, should we move this one up a little bit more just to make it look a bit better? I kind of think we should. Well, let's go ahead and expand that out and then pull that back in a little bit down here so there's a clear path moving through. There we are. That is marvellous. Now, it's going to take us a little while to get this up and running. We need a little bit more straw. <laughs> Always the case, I suppose. But, uh, oh, we've got some flax over there, I believe. Uh, yes, we do, which we can break down into the straw, which may be all that we're going to need to be able to finish this off. Uh, sadly, we are now out of berries as well. Uh, all right, we are going to need cooking skill for setting that one up. Is this cooking eel? No, it's not. Are you in the light? No, you're not. That's fantastic. Uh, you've got antibodies right now, which means you're immune to the common cold, which is actually quite nice. All right, then things are coming together. Though we're definitely going to need to get out there and gather some more berries. Uh, let's go ahead and grab a good amount. That should be enough. And very, very soon we're going to be able to invite in a couple of... Uh, extra peeps. Oh, the sheep is out and about. Ah, the sheep is off to get something to drink. Yeah, we don't have any uh, water bowls for them just yet. Hopefully we can get that all set up reasonably soon, but uh, we'll see how that one goes. But for now, I'm quite happy with where things are at. And if we can get that kiln up and running uh, before we wrap up today's episode, then I will be especially happy. Though looking at the time, we're right up against the uh, the timer at the moment. I can possibly stretch to a couple of extra minutes, I guess. Not like I didn't stretch to like over a 15 extra minutes in the first episode, but if you're not willing to put in the time for the first episode, then when are you willing to put in the time, I suppose? 
Alright, let's have a look. You're all gonna chill out for a little bit, uh, having a bit of a socialise. Ooh, Amir is off to repair some stuff. Uh, probably repairing some of the animal beds, I imagine. Just generally socialising. Oh, you're socialising with the cat. Is the cat social? The cat is kind of socialising, it looks like. Uh, its instinct is starting to decay, so it probably will head out to try and uh, take out some animals in the near future. Let's have a look at your social. Social is going up. It's not too bad. Uh, loving pet. Oh, that's quite pretty, actually. Right. Let's have a gander. How are things going? Food is going where it needs to. That is marvellous. We're down to 10 degrees inside, which is absolutely fantastic. That's going to continue to, uh, to work for us, I should imagine. And we've also got a bunch of mushrooms on uh, the drying rack as well. That's absolutely fantastic. And there we go. The kiln is set up. Right, now we've got a couple of things that have opened up. You will notice clay jugs. You might be wondering why is a water jug on the fire? This is for when you've got frozen water jugs, but you have no other source of fresh water. That's when you would use it down there. In the middle of winter, they'll go out and they'll fill their water jugs with ice, which is something I was doing when I was in Norway the, uh, the last time I was there. Uh, up in the cabin in the woods, go out and just uh, fill, a, fill a pitcher with, with uh, fresh snow. Uh, not for drinking, you understand? <laughs> It was for other reasons. Uh, right, so now we can make clay jugs. This is absolutely going to be imperative for what we're going to be working with. And we can also make clay bricks and tiles. Uh, the jugs is going to be super, super important, but uh, we're not going to worry about that one just yet. But let's have a look at ideas and where that we are going to be able to go from here. Uh, pet bed, that is a big, big importance to us. Uh, clothing basket, what can we do? We still need to get the sackcloth to get the clothing basket. That's kind of annoying that pet bed is locked behind that, if I'm perfectly honest, I wish it weren't, but uh, we'll be able to get to it. Now we need to make a hundred bricks in order to make the brick floor. We are gonna have to go for the pet bed in order to get the water bowl. All right, uh, I see how you are. We'll need five jugs in order to unlock the jug pallet. All right, so I guess the next one that we're really gonna want to go for is the clothing zone, so that we can actually start making our own clothing. I might want to get the flute before then, though, so that our pawns have uh, have some uh, something to entertain themselves with of an evening. We have got the stone floor over here that I can also unlock, and that's probably one of the better ones to go for. But for a little bit extra, we can go for the brick floor. But we do have an awful lot of stones that I could use that I wouldn't mind using. Uh, so that may be something that we could uh, get on board with. But either way, let's go ahead and set up brick floors. Uh, we're going to want to go for 100 bricks. Uh, same thing for tiles. Get to 100 tiles. I'm not actually sure how much they stack to. Whenever I find out how much they stack to, we'll then get that many. And I will make six jugs because I know that's how many will fit on a single pallet. But that is it. We are in autumn. We have made it to autumn. The first day of autumn, specifically. Are we in a good position? Relatively speaking, yes, we are. We have everything uh, here that we're going to need to uh, be able to supply ourselves through winter. Uh, the fact that we've got, uh, we're already starting on ceramics now and starting to make, uh, or rather, uh, working on uh, clay jugs. That is a very important one because without that we can't have water in the winter and as you can imagine, they will die without. Uh, we do need to get a little bit more going to have food for our animals over the winter that is a bit of a concern we're gonna have to start being much more aggressive in cutting back the grasses so that we actually have hay to feed our sheep through the winter but uh, we'll have to see how that goes in the next episode i really do hope you've enjoyed this one and are enjoying the series as a whole do let me know down below if you have any feedback or any tips for the game but until next time and as always from myself and all of the clan folk do take care